The motorsports world is where legends are made, the unthinkable happens, and barriers are broken. One man harnesses the power of an industry every week. This is the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor with Jim Beaver. Welcome to this week's General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Man, we got a big one for you this week. It is the Cranon edition of the show. Welcome to all you listeners tuning in on Sirius XM Channel 211, Dan Patrick Radio, Sports Byline, Podcast One, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Down and Dirty Radio Show.com. Uh, Spreaker and everywhere else, uh, U.S. American, you know, the American Forces Network. Uh, we've got our good friends there at Spy- Sports Byline USA. Yeah, we are all over the place. And welcome, welcome to the show. We're going to be talking about the biggest, baddest off-road race on the planet this week. Yes, the Cranon World Championships and World Cup is upon us. It is happening Labor Day weekend, and this show is all geared around that. Yes, we've got my good friend, Marty Fioka. He is an uh, off-road Hall of Famer. He's also an acclaimed Famed journalist with Racer Magazine, among many other outlets, and he is also the man behind the track at Cranon, and he's an accomplished racer himself, just got done racing Vegas Reno. He's my guest uh, here in hour number one, and then we have former world champion, World Cup winner, last year's Pro 2 points champion in the Midwest, Mr. Keegan Kincaid, who's throwing it down for our partners at Vision Wheel at the upcoming Cranon race. Yeah, he's going to be on the show as well. Keegan, also repping the Down and Dirty Radio Show colors this season in the Midwest. Looking forward to having Keegan on the show. Then hour number two brings us to power rankings. Yes, Chris Leone is back. We got a double dose of power rankings. Man, we got Indy 500 to talk about. That is right, Indy 500. Yes, Chris and I will be talking about Indy 500 for a couple of segments as well as all the latest in the world of motorsports. And then, you know what I'm going to do? I got a segment in uh, big, big... uh, uh, talk on the internet, at least in my circles, has been social media. And it's been a while since I've chimed in on social media. There's a lot going on. People are asking how you grow your following, what's organic, what works in the world of motorsports. You know what? I am going to uh, wear the marketing and media hat, and I am going to talk a little bit about social media to start hour number two. So if you got any questions in regards to that or any of our guests, hit me up. It is at Jim Beaver 15. I might be checking my Instagram DMs, but mainly going to be checking the Twitter machine while we're live on air. So if you got any questions, hit me up. It's at Jim Beaver 15. That goes across all social media sites, but uh, specifically over there on Twitter during the show. And uh, we'll get those questions answered when we return here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all new G Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode. 
beam panels, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my very good friend, and I can officially say teammate, Marty Fioka, to the show. What's happening, Marty? Are you sure you can say that at this point, Jimmy? I hope so. Uh, everything is going great. We are here in... Crandon getting ready for the 51st Polaris World Championships here at Crandon right after having spending a good amount of time with you in Nevada Desert over there at the Best in Desert uh, Vegas Arena race. I was going to say, you have had, if there's anybody in this industry that's had a busy month of August, I got to say it's probably you between racing with me, um, you know, everything you've got going at Crandon, plus, you know, on the side, you do a lot of writing and, and content for Racer Magazine and, and, you know, various other places. Marty, you have had one busy month, man. You know, we have, and it's funny because it's like everything this year, um, you know, it's all kind of coming down to the wire, uh, not on purpose, but just in terms of what's possible, what's not possible. That goes from everything from, you know, hosting fans here at, at Coran and International Raceway for, you know, four or five days coming up on Labor Day to corporate partners and what they can do and can't do. Um, it's been a completely different year than, let's say, the Latin, let's say the 50th, when we were concerned about things like Kid Rock concerts and 50th anniversary parades and those type of things. So different different year. I think every event promoter is going to look back on 2020 with a, a, a lot of dread <laughs> and a lot of anxiety looking forward to when things are, quote, unquote, more normal. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. Well, let's kind of go back to, I guess, the beginning of the month. You and I have – we're going to talk Marty, the race car driver, first. So let's talk about uh, – let's talk about a little bit about Vegas Torino, Marty. And I know uh, this is something you and I hatched. I don't know, man. This has been, what, a year and a half ago we started kind of talking about having you come out and race with me. And I know UTVs have become a big part of, uh, well, just the off-road industry and our culture as a whole. I know there at Cranon they've been some of the biggest divisions. Uh, you know, but I know you, you've you got such a career. You know, you've raced in Class 1 and all these other different divisions. But I know – you know, the thought was, let's get you out and, you know, experience a desert UTV, uh, you know, in the premier class, you know, and see what your thoughts were. And, uh, you know, obviously we were finally able to do it. Uh, you know, I know you've driven everything from class ones and, and things like that. I mean, wh what's your takeaway from driving a UTV for the first time in the desert? Well, that's a really multi Prong question. Um, first of all, yeah, I was looking forward to spending some time with you uh, and really kind of exposing myself to the side-by-side -side world today. I mean, you know, I was building Yamaha Rhinos uh, back in the day, you know, which essentially were basically farm implements with long travel kits on them uh, for race, or excuse me, for Dirt Sports Magazine that I ran back then. And um, But, yeah, I have driven everything from Class 10, 12, 1, stock full, you know, short course, done a lot of racing and testing over the years, and it's given me kind of a broad spectrum of understanding, but I really didn't understand what was really involved uh, in the TV market, and you really can't get that experience, as you know, Jim, until you really immerse yourself, and, you know, we had a, a nice short window, unfortunately, could have done a lot more testing, done a lot more things, but you know, there was a lot of things that really struck me about the whole experience. Um, first of all, I got to say, you know, you, you have a really great team, which is the, the heart and soul of every racing effort. Your guys are awesome. 
uh, spending time with you and your dad was really fun. Dad, your dad's a piece of work, as we all know. <laughs> so um, it was great speaking with him. And then, you know, actually also hanging out with kind of a desert newbie is really fun, too. You know, we were teamed with Steve Arpin, who you put together. And, you know, you can tell how much fun it is to see, you know, desert racing through the eyes of a first-timer. And, and it kind of brings you back to when it all started for you and I. Yeah, you know, and I, I think it, it does. And and I know you've been, you know, I, I've been able, fortunate, you know, with a, my Star Car program to bring, you know, those type of people in and, and things like that and work in conjunction with Polaris. And, and Steve, you know, obviously Star Car's wrapped up bringing him in. But you kind of want to go back. I mean, you've been uh, instrumental in that over the past couple of decades. I mean, I can remember back with, uh, what was it, Mike and Robbie Groff, and it was a big program you guys had where you were racing with them in Class 1. And, I, you know, I think back and I'm like, man, what I've been able to do is pretty much just a replica of what you kind of, uh, you know, the, the groundwork you laid with that program. Well, I mean, thank you. The crossover thing has been around off of racing a long time. But when I was Nissan's uh, motorsports PR representative back in the mid-90s for the sports car program and then the indie indie program through the IRL, you know, I was exposed to people like Roberto Guerrero and Mike Groff and Danny Sullivan and all these people. And, you know, we, we had started Wide Open Baja immediately kind of after that. And, uh, you know, right in, there in 2000, when we got the wide open program together, um, you know, for the Baja 2000, we got a bunch of cars and stars together to really experience it. And, you know, immerse, and we and eventually through that program, through the, the wide open Baja challenge at the Baja 1000, we had everybody from Patrick Dempsey to Paul Newman to, you know, Oriol Servia, uh, Fashion Bourdais, all kinds of racers came to the wide open program because, you know, there was a ride and drive deal with cars that, you know, almost always finished every Baja 1000. In fact, one year, we had 18 of 18 cars finished the Baja 1000 from Ensenada to La Paz, no less, and two trophy trucks. And we had a program really together back then, and uh, we were able to expose the sport to a lot of people. And, yeah, that started then in 2002. I teamed with uh, Robbie and Mike Roth in the BFG Toyota Class 1 car, that, the, the yellow car that's in – Dust to Glory, the first one, the yellow BFG car was our car. It was a Jimco 2000 at that time with a Camry V6 motor. But yeah, all of 350 horsepower, but it was a great car. And then, you know, Jimmy Vassar drove that car, too. And it was kind of like the star car, except we, we put journalists in the right seat a lot. So we had car and driver, motor trend, all kinds of magazines at that time take rides with us in, in a real race car. And that was kind of the whole program. Yeah, you know, and I think that, you know, that kind of really, that was the first time I saw it. I was like, wow, this is really how a, a program should work. You know, to, well, not necessarily a program to work. I mean, the marketing and the media behind it. But, you know, it, it was one of those where what you were doing and exposing these outside mainstream, not only, you know, racers, but I mean, just the media that you got involved. I mean, it, it was really putting our sport on the map. And this is, you know, I don't want to say pre-internet era, but really it was pre-social media era, you know, and, and it was really remarkable what you guys were able to accomplish. Well, it's crazy to think about the fact that at that time we were able to put that together with, you know, substantial help from BF Goodrich and Toyota, um, you know, in, in a Class 1 car, no less. But, you know, it was, it was an open-wheel car. It, it fit the Mike and Robbie Groff kind of thought process. I mean, they had a steep learning curve. Like, you know, it's very, very interesting to kind of watch the approaches that these guys take. Some, you know, come in with kind of hat in hand and say, look, I don't really know anything. Kind of teach me what you know. It's going to take a while. Uh, to, you know, guys thinking they could, they could you know, drive anything because they were, had driven Indy cars and driven Le Mans and things like that. And, you know, it's a completely different discipline and a completely different mindset. And, um, you know, it was interesting to watch it. The Gross, we had a great time. Uh, we were very, very successful in the PR marketing effort. I wouldn't say we were a great race team, but, um, you know, we did what we were supposed to do. And they were in it for two years, had a great time, uh, eventually got out of it. But, uh, you know, it was really my chance to drive a Class 1 car for a year, full season. And, you know, I loved, loved it at that time. And then, you know, obviously the sport of all passed that. And I drove a little bit for John Hara with P.J. Jones in, in, a, in a bigger 560-horsepower Class 1 car and even more after that. But, you know, that was a golden era. I, I really thought that that time, you know, Class 1, which is, you know, unlimited open-wheel cars, was really kind of a real – really hit its stride with those with those particular cars when we were using V6s and V8s, but they were still lighter, you know, as compared to what they were now. I think our car was like 3,300 pounds, 3,400 pounds, and, you know, I went down to Jimco the other day and saw a brand new class one car. It's got to be all of 5,500 with, with all the weight and all the bigger transmission, bigger wheels, bigger tires. You know, we had 3,500 tires back then. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, you talk about that era, and this is just me going, gosh, yeah, you talk about the guys and that were racing in there, and, I mean, you know, the McMillans and, uh, you know, the Wyricks and Mark and Gary were just uber competitive, you know, and it, you look, you just look down that list of, uh, you know, some of the guys that have dominated Trophy Truck the last few years. I mean, they they all spent so much time there in Class 1. It's kind of it's kind of interesting how we've seen that evolution, you know, up up to the Trophy Truck division. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately for us lovers of, of, of that, you know, unlimited open wheel cars, and I've always kind of been referred to as a buggy dork along with guys like Cameron Steele. You know, that's really what I love to drive. I mean, trucks are great, but I love buggies. I love the engine in the back. I love gearboxes and shifting gears and that type of thing. You know, so that was great. And, and there were guys like Pat Dean and the Wilsons and all that. And now, you know, all that has kind of deflected itself over to the 6100, you know, spec trophy truck class. You know, the costs are about the same, um, but you have a, you, now you get a truck. I mean, it's not the same exactly, but it, it, it more or less is. And, you know, we've seen a lot of people migrate out of the class one ranks. I think they've gotten too heavy, too big. Um, they're expensive. I mean, everything's racing is expensive. It's relative, but I think most people, you know, are, are going right to spec trophy truck division that's why you see so many of them like it, as we just saw at vegas torino and of course going right to the unlimited trucks because it's it's gonna be hard to imagine i think the last time a class one car won overall at a major race i think was in san felipe years ago now with armin schwartz and martin christensen in a, in a you know a jimco v8 car and and that was i must have been boy i'd say seven eight years ago and it could be longer than that yeah i was gonna say i mean I'm trying to think back. Maybe Harley Lettner overall the uh, uh, one of the smaller best in the desert races or something before he moved up to uh, you know the the trophy truck ranks. But yeah, we're we're having to dig pretty deep here to find uh, find something, Marty. But hey, we're up against a time break, but we are going to take a short commercial break. We come back more with Marty Fioca when we return to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, along with my good friend Marty Fioka. Marty, we've been talking some off-road history, some open wheel racing, some UTV racing, but uh, it is time for us to uh, shift gears, my friend, because uh, you know we, we've got Vegas Torino under our belts, but that means uh, we're left with uh, a big, big race coming up here in about a week. Uh, Cranon, the biggest off-road race of the year. Uh, you know, it's coming up, Marty. It's upon us. Labor Day weekend. I mean, it's been going on for 50 years, and here we are for the 51st. And uh, I got to tell you, I am, uh, I'm really excited. We've got a star-studded list of uh, drivers coming out, and we've even got some celebrities showing up. I know it's public now, but Mr. Travis Pastrana is going to be showing up. I mean, uh, you know, all eyes are on Cranon here in about a week, Marty. All eyes will be on Cranon, and probably a lot more eyes this year. You know, everything shifts, Jim. You know, last year, like I said before, it was all about the Kid Rock concert for the 50th and the 50th itself and all that went around with that. This year, it really shifted from uh, a lot of things. You know, normally we have our first race, the Brush Run race, kicks off the season here in June. We rescheduled that to the end of September. And uh, so our first race really is our big one which is odd here, you know, to kind of get ready for that. But, you know, really it's been about two things. It's about even hosting a race at all. And the track here has spent a tremendous amount of time working with local and state agencies to make sure we could even hold the world championships. Uh, the blessing is that we are uh, up in the north of Wisconsin, and we are in Wisconsin. And Wisconsin's a, a fairly open state. It has been for a long time. 
up here in the north was all summer from Memorial Day to July. People have been out boating. They've been out side by side, you know, running around to the woods up here, you know, having a good time, enjoying their summers. It's a little bit different than where I live in California, but that's allowing us to open up and actually hold a race. Again, with, the, with state and local authorities, we have an extensive COVID plan that we put together that's on crannonoffroad.com. And, you know, we're, we're going to hold our events, and we've got a lot of safety things in place, but at the same time, we're able to basically open up our, our park, open up our camp, and we've eliminated certain things like, um, you know, uh, we're having a driver's meeting, for instance, or not in a crowded building, but rather on our, in our grandstand area. We've eliminated our concerts Friday and Saturday night. We've eliminated some of the parties that go on in the back of camping in terms of putting up big tents and social gatherings. Uh, but basically, we're allowing people to come and exercise their judgment. And, you know, all our policies are up in place. But, you know, it, it's going to be an interesting thing to see how this all plays out. But right now, to be honest with you, it looks like it's going to be a normal year at Crandon at the World Championships. Our camping's almost sold out. Um, you know, we're having a lot of interest from people who really, I think, want to get out. Uh, yeah, some people are deciding to stay home. That includes some of our staff here, volunteer staff and the food you know, areas and such, but, you know, I think the 51st Polaris, uh, you know, Crandon Opera World Championships and our Crandon World Cup race on Sunday races are going to be, you know, looking going to be as successful as they've been in the past. Yeah, well, and I'm looking, uh, you know, last year, it, I feel like we, Crandon, you know, it's been this slow burn where it's been, you know, we for the longest time we've had the West Coast and we've had the Midwest and things like that. And it was slowly it was like we were drawn back in the the West Coast drivers to uh, to Cranon every year. And I feel like last year we had a lot. And just when you think we had a lot last year, Marty, I, I almost think this year we may have more West Coast drivers coming to Cranon for not only Labor Day but possibly both Cranons because of the way they fall in your guys' <laughs> new policies. But I think this one actually might even be bigger. Uh, as far as kind of a, a car count and a big name, you know, big name type of thing than uh, than last year. Yeah, I think it's going to be right there with it, Jimmy. Um, you know, some some of the durations we had last year aren't necessarily competing at all this year. But as of now, we have about 45 of the pro truck class is going to be here. So about 15 pro fours, uh, which are the limited, you know, 900 four horsepower trucks, about 15 pro twos and about 15 pro lights. Uh, you know, without with all the hundreds of, you know, other sportsmen and UTV racers, you know, we've got 26 races on tap for the weekend, and we have two, you know, feature Ultra 4 races, too. Uh, one Saturday night under the lights here with the King of the Hammers cars and one on Sunday. And then, you know, a lot of that really has to do with the hard work put in by Crandon and uh, everyone around here and our partners such as Red Bull to put the the World Cup concept together where we brought East and West Coast together on the biggest day, which was Sunday of Labor Day, for big money for the sport and, you know, the best television packages we could get. And that concept is what drove a lot of the West Coast uh, racers East to kind of experience what it's like to come back to Korea. A lot of them had ever done it, or a lot of them, like Rob McCachron, had forgotten kind of how, how it was. And, you know, as, as such, you know, guys like Brian Deegan are going to be here. He's been here testing already. Uh, Bryce Menzies was here already testing. Uh, Rob McCachron's coming back. And, yeah, part of the, our hospitality initiative for 2020 is to say, hey, we have another race coming in three weeks. Uh, in fact, the exciting news is, is we actually put lights in the infield, so we'll be running our first night racing ever at Crandon in the second weekend of, of our race season here, uh, the 26th and 27th, uh, for the Brush Run weekend. And it, it, the, the race park looks spectacular because of all the grass. It looks like a baseball stadium, and we're really excited about that, too. And we're allowing the teams to keep their, their trucks here. And, uh, you know, it's going to be great. But we really need to talk about what you're doing, Jimmy, and, and uh, kind of the, the live streaming we're doing out of here. We've, we've really, really got a, an exciting program, as you know. Well, yeah, I, I'm really excited about the live stream for uh, for Sunday there at Cran. And, I, I, you know, sometimes you get speechless. But I think, Marty, what you guys have uh, packaged, and I'm just fortunate to be a part of the broadcast team. I mean, you know, Ralph Shaheen coming in who – you know, I, I put him up on the Mount Rushmore of broadcasters and, and motorsports. You know, he, he's right up there in my list. I mean, just the opportunity to work with him is going to be phenomenal. But, you know, the streaming package you've got, you know, including Racer Magazine and, and Speed Sport and, and everybody else. I mean, this is, uh, this is big, Marty. This could be one of the biggest, I think, live stream off-road broadcasts in history. 
Yeah, I think so. We're, we're working hard. There's, there's a lot of things in play. There's quantity of hours and racing, and there's quality of production. We put a lot into Sunday show, not only with you and uh, Tiffany Stone, but as you mentioned, Ralph Shaheen's going to be here to host it. Uh, you know, we're doing basically mod, taking some modules out of the race. For instance, in the morning uh, in the World Cup, the Pro 2 and Pro 4 race will be one uh, kind of a segment that's going to air on Speed Sport TV and Racer TV, uh, along with live stream. And then in the afternoon, you know, the Pro Light race and the Cup race will as well. Polaris will be streaming the UTV races on their social media platforms. Um, so the idea here now is to really – to, to not necessarily count only on TV, although we do have a package on FS1 in October as well for the Pro 4 and the, uh, and the, and the Cup races. So um, the idea here is to really drive uh, numbers and, and open up the exposure to Cran and open up the exposure to Shore first because we didn't have an idea, you know, three or four months ago if we were going to be able to host people at all. But we did have, you know, our partners like Polaris and the Yokohama Vision Wheel, uh, Ponzi, the, the Forest County Potawatomi, that really wanted to make sure that we were going to survive and we were able to, to provide return on investment. And the only way to do that for sure that we controlled was, was live streaming social media platforms and doing it in a way that almost looked like a, like a quote-unquote real television production, and that's the level of, of production values we're putting into Sunday for sure. So really excited about it. Well, and I, I think just the industry as a whole, and you know, you you're kind of like me where you wear multiple hats. But you know, from where we were, were ten years ago to where we're at now, I mean, you know, getting the word out on your events and and you know, live streaming and social media. I mean, the entire business model has shifted, Marty. It used to be get the best television package you can get, and that's all you had to worry about. You know what I mean? Hey, we're on ESPN. This is great. But now there's so much more that goes into it. I mean, you need the television, but you need all these different broadcast partners within, you know, within the internet and the digital space. And I think it, the, the whole dynamic has shifted. And you'd have seen a lot of series struggle with that. It seems like off road, we're we're one of the few, specifically Cran, and that's you know kind of found found their way through all that. Yeah, I mean, I have to also credit the the the, the, the good folks over at the Champ Off Road series. They have done a great job of live streaming. They they've just redefined the whole. Uh, you know, experience for the viewer with live drones, which we actually kind of introduced at Crana last year for the first time. It wasn't live at that time, but we did bring a drone racer in to one of our media partners and literally saw what this guy from Texas did. He was a, a legitimate pro drone racer, and he was chasing Bryce Menzies on, on a beautiful lap at, sun, at sunset here, and we saw the footage and fell in love with it, and you know, Champ Off-Road has taken that, and if you watch the, the racing there, they've got that, that live stream going with the live drone following the racetrack. They're literally a, a foot or two off, you know, off their roofs, and it's, it's really dynamic and exciting. But, yeah, as a promoter, you're right, Jimmy, it's gotten much more complicated because in the old days, quote-unquote, you could, uh, you know, invite an ESPN and their production team to come in. They would film their one-hour network show, and you'd be satisfied. But now, you know, think about it. We Instead of one hour of, of, of coverage coming out of at a weekend, we now have literally, you know, almost 30 hours, one, one of those network hours, you know, on FS1, as I mentioned, but then, you know, multiple platforms going out, you know, via Ultra 4, via Racer.com, via, you know, Speed Sport, um, so that we try to reach as many audiences as we can. And now, the, what's great about this multiple Multiple platform program is we're reaching, you know, a lot of the different motorsports fans, like on racers, racer TV, uh, and then you know different fans of circle track and such with speed sport, and they seem to complement each other pretty well. But you know, it puts a lot of onus on us and the track to pr to produce stuff or produce content, I should say, that's really really exceptional. And not just turning on a camera and, and a static camera. I mean, we have, you know, commercial inserts. We've got video inserts. We've got live interviews. You know, all types of things that we're doing to make this thing look like a live television show on multiple platforms. Again, a wonderful technology, wonderful way to, but it's much, much, much more complicated than it used to be to get sometimes even the same numbers of audience members to watch. But I think we're, we feel like we're going to be very successful this year. Well, Marty, we're up against a time break, but uh, we'll see you at Cranon this next weekend. And we've got a lot more when we turn here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound. The sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to uh, welcome my good friend and uh, Vision Wheel teammate, Mr. Keegan Kincaid, to the show. Keegan, man, uh, I guess Cranon's upon us, right? It's uh, it's coming up quick. I guess uh, for everybody, that's kind of the big one, Labor Day weekend at Cranon, but. Uh, uh, talk us through uh, what's going on in your world, the season so far, new truck, uh, new sanctioning body. I mean, we got a lot of new stuff going on in Midwest Short Course this year. Yeah, it's been a while uh, since I've talked to you on, on the radio show. So it, it's um, it's definitely been a, a struggle year for um, not just for racing, but for everybody in general with um, all this pandemic stuff. And we've been grateful that Sam Parker um, came on, on board and was able to um, not just Champ Off Road, but ERX and Crandon and um, Lena Dirt Dirt City. They were all able to get together and come up with plans to make sure we we're able to race and um, get some racing in this season. And we've been really thankful for that. And um, this year we built a brand new truck starting in uh, about November. And uh, if we had known now what was going to happen and all the scenario, we might have been did different, but. We were able to get everything scrambled together, get this truck ready just in time for um, the first round, and was able to go out there and and we we won the first event. So it was it was really good and really gratifying to do that. We've had some little problems on Grimlets here and there, but we've been able to um, scavenge up some good podium finishes, and we're right there in the pony hunt coming into Crandon, which I, I'm excited for. We're finally here. We missed Spring Run. Um, it got moved back behind Paul Cranon. 
on Labor Day. And so uh, we're excited. We're in the two of my favorite races in my hometown. Um, what a better opportunity. Yeah, well, and I I guess, like, for you, too, with with the new truck, you know, obviously you want to do well at Cranon with the two cup races. I mean, those are kind of the two biggest events of the year on the calendar. Like, it might actually, you think, it be a benefit running both the Cranons later in the year because it gives you a, a shot at those, you know, probably a better, you know, obviously Labor Day is always second or one of the last races or the last race. But I feel like it might give you a little bit of better opportunity to go out and win those you know, those bonuses just because especially that second crane and is pushed back so late, you know, you've got the truck pretty, yeah. pretty dialed in at this point. Yeah, definitely. We just went out and tested um, earlier this week. And um, finally, well, that was our first opportunity this season to get out and actually work out some of the bugs. And, and man, I felt, you know, I, I've been frustrated all year and figuring things out and trying to get this thing ready to go. And um, we finally got it to where, where we like it and what a better time than um we were actually grateful that crane did get moved to the second event you know i don't know if we'd have still had some problems but um it was a great opportunity for us and we always perform well you know at Cranon, so we got a really good opportunity to come away with this points championship in the next couple of weekends so yeah well, you know, all that being said, dude, I, I got to ask, you know, obviously, I think, what was it, two years ago, you built a brand new truck. A year ago, you, two years ago, I can't remember, but you built a brand new truck, and then you turn around, and that truck won a ton. I mean, obviously, you're, you know, reigning champ in Pro 2 and things like that. Um, you know, what what goes into the, the theory behind, you know, all of a sudden taking this truck that's on top of top of the world and then, um, you know, and building another one. I mean, were there a lot of changes you made or was it just fine tuning? I mean, what's the theory? Cause a lot of people would have been stoked with the truck you had, you know, you just came off a championship. What was the theory behind building a new truck? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, my model is just never settle. You know what I mean? And I feel like the people that settle are eventually the ones that get left behind. And so we try to just keep progressing and, and, um, we've built our race trucks and we wanted to upgrade some things to try and, um, have an opportunity, you know, if, if I could sell my truck, we'd be able to upgrade those parts on it and, uh, sold the truck the same day. I, I basically posted it and, um, we just never looked back from there. We're like, all right, we have no other opportunity, you know, so let's just build another truck. So we started doing that. Um, did the stuff that we wanted to it and more, we, we built a new Roush engine and, uh, we're, we're just excited. You know, this truck is uh, finally coming around. I tell you what, I'm I'm over building a new truck in the rush of it, but uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully, you know, this one's going to be good for us for a couple of years, and we can keep making changes that we need to to this truck. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. This truck has a lot of potential yet that hasn't even been unlocked, so um, we're ready. Yeah, I feel like you and. Kyle and Duke are probably the only two guys crazy enough like every single season to it seems like are pretty regularly building a new truck and with him it's just like you said it's like never settle and it's not like he's making huge changes but it's like oh we can make that just a hair quicker a hair quicker a hair quicker you know and I, I feel like you're you're kind of the same mindset it's like you, you build it and about as soon as it's done you go back and you're like oh yeah we could probably do this and make a change here make it a little bit better you know. Yeah, I think, you know, we're the same thing. We do it for a living, Kyle, myself, and my dad, and, uh, you know, even the Greed. They, they've all, you know, you get to the point where you you can't, you got to keep progressing in the sport. And the sport's progressed so much even since I started. And so um, you're always trying things. And even in Pro 4, you know, Pro 4 is even more extreme than um, ever before. They're always innovating and doing something new and on top of that. So, um, yeah, that, that ball changes all the time. You'll see a lot of Pro 4 guys building new trucks more consistently than Pro 2s, but we just try to, you know, keep ahead of the curve, and um, I think that's what good racers do, and sometimes it bites you, and sometimes you build a truck, and you're like, oh, I should have did this, or I should have did that, um, but there's always the next one, so uh, we just keep keep working and, and try to be the best we can be. Yeah, well, you, you know, how important is Pro 2 – with weight. I mean, Pro 4 obviously is all about weight as well, but, you know, they've got, you know, unlimited engines and, you know, an all-wheel drive and things like that. I mean, Pro 2, especially now where we don't have the open engines we had in the past, you know, we've got this kind of uh, uh, fixed engine type setup, man. I mean, how important is weight when you're doing the design and things like that? You know, I feel like when you guys have those, you know, 900, 950 horsepower engines, maybe things where you could be a little bit more liberal in the, with yeah. the weight, but I feel like now you guys really have to have those things under a microscope. 
yeah, you know, when previously when it was the open motor, we could build 430s, 440s for the people that had heavier trucks. They weren't as conscious about um, making sure they they weigh um, where the 410s now we can be lighter, um, a minimum of 42 out west, 4100 here. Um, so they're just you're, they're just being really cautious when we build trucks. We try to build these trucks as balanced as possible. And uh, the funny thing is, is we we've gotten to the point where we kind of know where it's going to end up and um, it's, it's right there. always really close and a um, few dialing here and there, and we get, we're able to add weight to where we want. Um, it allows it just being ahead of that game. And instead of looking to shed pounds after uh, we can add where we need to. And uh, that's one thing that, that keeps us on top too. So. Yeah. Well, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about the series because I know, you know, obviously you've got a new truck. You've got to talk about the series though. Champ off road came in and, you know, Carl and, Frank D'Angelo and everybody there at ISOC, you know, kind of kind of came in and, you know, made some changes. Obviously, you know, we, we've had a turnover of organizations, you know, the past couple of years in the Midwest. But I feel like, man, I, I feel like maybe we've got one that's here to stay. I know their live stream package has been phenomenal that they put together. I mean, you know, I haven't been boots on ground in an event. I know the boys at Vision Wheel have. And obviously you've been at all the events. I'm looking forward to Cranon. But, I mean, you know, how has this year been? I mean, it feels like everybody that I talk to is so positive on Midwest Short Course right now. Yeah, it's been good. You know, the first off is to start your first year in the pandemic is never good. And I um, understand the sponsorship side of it and the struggle. And uh, it's been, it's been good. You know, they've been putting their foot forward and allowing us to raise and they've been working with the tracks, working with the drivers and um, coming up with the best possible solution to, to put on events for us. And, and we've been able to do that with fans this year. And um, that itself is, is pretty cool. And, um, they're just open to taking conversations and, and talking with you. And, um, but it's still, they, they started, basically they had to dig themselves out of a hole, you know, previously, you know, torque. And before that Lucas oil had it a little bit and it's just, I've changed, it's changed hands since I've been involved. I don't know how many times anymore. And, um, that's always a struggle. And, um, you know, Robbie Gordon's always said, you know, the best kept secret, uh, and racing, you know, is is short course. So hopefully we can these guys understand it. The live stream's been awesome. They bring in a drill guy to do it. Um, hey, the shots have just been really cool. And um, I hope they continue to progress that, get some sponsorship involved uh, for the next couple of years, and hopefully watch this sport grow like it needs to be. So yeah. I'm excited to be. We're all invested in it, and hopefully it's a um, uh, work in progress. So. Yeah, what's it going to take to, uh, you know, you've won, you've got a you've got a cup win, you know, you've got a World Cup win there at at Cranon. What's it going to take this year on Sunday, Labor Day weekend, for you to take this new truck with all these Pro Fours coming in now and everything else? I feel like our our good friend RJ, he's bringing the heat with his Pro Four. He said, I mean, what's it going to take for you and that Pro Two to uh, to put things on top of the box during the Cup race again? Yeah, you know that's the. Uh be on top is just uh uh you need a little luck and you need a little skill at the same time and that's why we wanted to build a new truck we had some ideas because we knew we had to be faster and um especially if you're in pro two it's run and hide where pro four is the the attacker and um it's definitely more fun and you have a lot more advantage in the pro four um but there's also a skill set behind the pro two is just running consistent laps um and just running away and hiding and um that's what we have to do this year, and hopefully we can get out far enough and and uh, have to have them catch us and just not enough in the end. And um, a lot of it is just off of based off of times throughout the weekend, and um, there's a lot of determining factors. And so that's what I say about having a little luck on your side is hopefully they give you a little more time than uh, that next green flag for the Pro 4s. But, yeah, no, we're excited. Uh, we're fast. We went on and tested. The trucks felt good, and so – we're ready going into this next weekend. So yeah, I, I feel like you need to get, you guys all need to make like a promise, all the pro two drivers together and be like, all right. So the whole weekend, everybody run about a second off our normal pace. So that way it uh, stacks yeah. the deck in your favor when they feel out figured the stagger. Right. Yeah. I always said, I'm going to, uh, basically we're, I'm, we're all going to get together and we're just going to, we'll all split the money between each other. And we got to create a wall that we can just stop the pro fours from getting in front of us. And we'll just let one guy go and run and all the pro twos will have a party and leave the pro fours in the back. So 
uh, <laughs> it's just a funny joke that we got going on to try to manipulate as much as we can. But uh, it's good when we get out on the track. It's your adrenaline's pumping and, and you go racing. So, yeah. so I I gotta ask. So what is this Todd Robinson? I I've got asked to be in this volleyball tournament. And uh, or something going on at Cranon, and Todd's like, we're going to start calling Keegan out on social media. And I'm like, I don't know that I want to. I'm like, if Keegan plays volleyball like he plays basketball, I don't know that I'm calling Keegan out on anything. But, so, so give me the lowdown. Even T-Stone's been talking about it on this radio show. What, what do we got going down? Yeah. What, what am I getting involved in, Keegan, here at Cranon in this volleyball tournament? Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, Todd and Tiff and them have been talking, and they – they wanted to get together and we'll, we'll have a little old friendly volleyball match. And, um, you know, we said, all right, you got to recruit your team. And, um, I, I said, well, you got to be, uh, you're going to need some better recruiting than Todd over there. So <laughs> Todd, so I feel pretty comfortable in our, on our team and, uh, it, it's just all in good fun. And that's what I love, uh, about the vision wheel team and the family there. And, you know, Tiff and all of, all the guys there are, are funny and, we're going to get a good volleyball game together. I got my recruiting doing probably some of my friends, probably Tito Labine. That's always there. Uh, we'll have fun and hopefully uh, nobody gets hurt, but uh, <laughs> I know we'll probably come out on top. So we're not too worried about it. Yeah. Well, we started laughing. The joke was earlier uh, last week when Tiff was on the show, we started talking about this. We were trying to figure out who was on our team. And I was like, well, I wonder if Keegan's wife can play volleyball like him. If so, maybe we'll recruit her yeah. to our team and have her playing against yeah. Keegan. So <laughs> I was like, I bet she's got a little game yeah. there. <laughs> we'll probably have to start a little argument in the house then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, man, it's always fun having you on the show, Keegan. Dude, uh, you know, we'll see you here uh, shortly at Cranon. Looking forward uh, looking forward to going back there and spending a few days. And, uh, you know, it's some of the best racing, man. And I, uh, I can't wait to get out there with you guys. Thanks. I appreciate you and um, look forward to racing in front of some fans finally and in Crandon and um, just getting back to some normalcy and having a good time. So uh, for Vision Wheel, Cooper Tire, Amsoil, you know, all those guys down in Dirty Show, I, I thank you all for helping me this season. It's been a struggle um, through this pandemic, but we're here, we're through it, and uh, we're, we're racing. So we're excited to finish the year here out at, at Crandon. Yeah, well, and shoot, I guess uh, to tag on to that, I, I, we didn't even bring it up, but, man, we got Pastrana coming in yeah. to race against you. You're banging doors with TP, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Keegan, it's been fun, man. We'll see you out at Crandon, but we got to take a short commercial break right here on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, man, what a uh, big action-packed hour number one. Talking about Cranon, the World Championship weekend, uh, you know, World Cup going on. You know, great to have Marty and uh, Keegan, uh, you know, on the show. Those of you tuning in on uh, Dan Patrick Radio, Sirius XM Channel 211, uh, make sure and uh, skip over. Switch the dial to uh, Sports Byline USA or hit us up at downandirtyshow.com, Podcast One, or, uh, you know, anywhere else you get your podcast, Apple Podcasts, you know, all those good places. And catch hour number two. We got power rankings coming up. I'm going to talk a little bit of – social media in racing and motorsports and a whole lot more so uh man i am looking forward to hour number two if it's uh, half as good as hour number one you know you guys are in 
for a treat. That is for sure. But, uh, yeah, lots coming at you. Uh, still got uh, a ton, a ton of content and a lot to talk about. I can't wait to uh, dive into uh, our first segment. If you do have fan questions, hit me up at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. I would love to get those fan questions into the show. I know uh, a lot of you are active, uh, you know, and, um, you know, when we're live and, uh, you know, tweeting me and things like that and giving me feedback. And, man, Chris and I, we're going to talk Indy 500. Let me know what you think of that finish. Takuma Sato winning under caution. You know, we had five laps to go. Graham Ray Hall, Scott Dixon, they're in a shootout with Takuma Sato for the win. And then all of a sudden, you know, yellow flag comes out. People thought it would be red. It didn't happen. And, uh, you know, by and large, you know, Takuma Sato, he rolls to uh, the victory there at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Sat well with the purists. Didn't sit well with uh, a lot of the uh, new fans of IndyCar. I'd love to hear your feedback, you know, so hit me up on social media. Let me know. But we got a lot more when we turn here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Trust me, hour number two is going to be epic. Want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm R.J. Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S., and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Gentle Tired Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. We have hour number two coming at you, and uh, trust me, this one's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, this first segment, uh, we are going to jump into talking uh, motorsports, marketing, media, especially after the Indy 500. You know, there, there's a lot that you can do. we got a lot of racers that tune into the show, not just fans, but uh, we're going to dive into uh, the nuts and bolts of social media and media and marketing around racing and uh, who's doing well, who's doing crappy. And, uh, you know, uh, if you're tuning in, you got a race program, what you can do to get a little bit more out of your program. So we're going to be talking about that and uh, obviously the Indy 500. Um, lots of racing going on this past week weekend lots of racing coming up uh chris and i are going to dive into that and uh we got a whole lot more uh you know to uh to talk about today so uh yeah you're definitely going to want to stay tuned for this hour number two uh it's going to be a, a heck of a lot of fun i know on project action this week we got a big one uh coming out next week in the video game industry tony hawks pro skater uh remix like a uh, tony hawks pro skater one and two chris and i do an entire podcast on tony hawks pro skater so if you're a video game game fan if uh, you're a tony hawk fan you know, if you're just a Tony Hawk Pro Skater fan, man, I think you're really going to enjoy what you what we've got coming at you, uh, you know, on Project Action. So make sure and check out my other podcast or my other show uh, over there on po- Podcast One and Apple Podcasts because it's going to be a good one this week. Really good one. One I'm really excited about. So um, 
<laughs> yeah, hit us up over there. And uh, don't forget, uh, if you are a uh, fan of Dirtfish Rally School, uh, one, you need to go to their site, dirtfish.com. If you're looking for rally content, video, um, you know, written pictures, they got it all in the world of rally, nationally, internationally, overseas, WRC, WRX, they have it dialed in, locked, loaded. Yeah, you want to go over there for it. And uh, if you're looking for a coupon code, use the coupon code JimBeaver15. That'll get you 15% off any and all classes as well as apparel, swag, everything else at Dirtfish. And you know what? If you're looking to get into racing yourself, quite, can't quite get behind the wheel of a real race car, you know what? iRacing might be the hot ticket for you. Sim racing done right at iRacing. Go to iRacing.com. And if you use the coupon code PR-JimBeaver, that is going to get you a 50% sign-up bonus. That is right. They're going to knock 50% off the price of an annual membership if you use PR-JimBeaver right there at iRacing. 50% off? Yeah, get in the game. Go iRacing. It is uh, a hell of a lot of fun, and I think you guys, uh, um, you know, you're going to be excited about some of the tracks that got coming out. <laughs> cock off, Cranon. Yeah, Cranon's coming. Uh, so if you're going to watch it this weekend, then all of a sudden you can play it on iRacing. Coming up. Yeah, you want to get in on that. So uh, we are going to take a short break, and then uh, Chris and I, we are going to uh, have power rankings, and uh, I got a whole lot more here at the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris. Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back here to the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And uh, yeah, it's uh, man, it has definitely been an interesting, uh, an interesting series of events this year. Uh, it's been an interesting show so far, man. Hyping it up, Cranon. I I truthfully cannot wait. Wait, it, it, I feel like I haven't been live on site at an event in quite some time. I know uh, 
uh, especially with fans and everything else. I, part of me, I, I'll be, I'll, I'll admit it, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, but it, I think, truthfully, too, at some point, the world of motorsports has got to get put back together. I know IndyCars run some events with fans, NHRAs run some events with fans. So uh, it's got me really kind of excited to uh, to see what an event with fans in this era of motorsports actually is. Because Vegas Torino, you know, I raced that last weekend, and, and truthfully, that didn't tell it, paint a good picture. I mean, we were it's the only race I've ever been to where you normally have all these festivities, pre-race off-road festivities, and all this other stuff. And that one, yeah, there was none of it. Legitimately, none of it. We we show up, and uh, you know, you go to uh, go to the race, and you get teched with a race car on the trailer. And you go to your hotel and then literally show up to the start line and race. Uh, no driver's meeting, no anything. It was all done on the Internet. Um, really, really interesting concept. And I think uh, I'm, you know, I've been up to Dirtfish Rally School. I've done a little traveling in the pandemic. And I tell you, I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, they're like, I'm scared to fly. And I'm like, why? They're like, well, you know, COVID-19, coronavirus and all this. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, have you been into an airport? No. Why would I go there? And I'm like, they're empty. I'm like, the planes are empty. The planes are spotless. Like, legitimately, you can eat off your trade table without a plate. Not that I would suggest you do it, but I'm like, no, legitimately. Like, uh, everything is spotless. I, I And truthfully, I've only flown on, well, I don't know, I guess I've flown on both Delta and American now. But, um, you know, they, they hand you, like, wet wipes when you come in, like, sanitized, like, Lysol wipes. You can wipe down your, your, your table and your area after they've already cleaned it. Um, my row when I did it, and I'm not just meaning like the three seats, you know what I mean, the, in my little bank. I mean like the whole row across from me as well. Nobody. I, I had six seats to myself. Um, it was quite surreal. I've never seen an airplane as empty as it was when I flew. And this was back in, what, June, July, into June. And, uh, you know, so it's been a month and a half, so I'm sure things have changed. But airport's dead. You know what I mean? It was, it was quite a, an interesting and surreal s- scenario. Um, nobody around, you know, luggage comes out right away because there's not many bags for them to pop out. Like, uh, I don't know. I, it's actually going to be an interesting holiday season, I think, too. You start getting into Thanksgiving and Christmas that are normal big travel days. I think roadways are going to be busy, people driving, things like that. But I, I think airports are going to still remain empty. Flights are dirt cheap right now. Have you priced them? But I'm just saying, like, anybody that's scared to fly, like, heck no. I got no problem with that. Like, I – I got a whole lot more to worry about. You know, you, you're driving those truck stop bathrooms. Yeah, I'd worry more about that than I would uh, would anything else at this point. So uh, I am looking forward to getting back to Cran, and I think it's going to be a, a great event. Obviously, you guys can tune in on the live stream. Uh, it's going to be, a, you know, Saturday and Sunday. I believe Friday they are too. Sunday's the day I'm doing it. Myself, Tiffany Stone, Ralph Shaheen, uh, Mia Chapman. Uh, you know her. She's going to be chiming in uh, on the live stream. She'll be uh, one of our co-hosts uh, for UTVs and carts. Um, so it's going to uh, it's going to be a great, great, uh, great time there at Cranon. Looking forward to getting back there, seeing all my Midwest familia. Um, you know, we got a lot of listeners to the show in Wisconsin. I'm sure this week, being that Keegan Kincaid's on the show and it's about Cranon, uh, we're going to have a lot of listeners tuning in. So if you are from the Midwest, I will be at the Vision Wheel booth Friday and Saturday. Come by, say hey. Would love to uh, meet some of the fans, things like that. Um, you know, um, it, it's just always fun to hear listeners to the show and meet listeners to the show. You know, you never quite know when uh, when one of them's going to pop up. But, uh, you know, that being said, I know there's been a whole lot of talk, especially in the pandemic. I, uh, so there was actually Sierra Roma, past guest of the show, factory Polaris driver, uh, just a really, really great talent behind the wheel. She was saying something about, you know, people buying social media followers, things like that. Well, you know, and, and there's a big discussion going on. Um, you know, and, and yeah, I, I know people, we all know the people that buy the social media followers. They get a hundred thousand followers and like five people like a photo. Yeah, it's fake. Right. Um, engagement has gone in the toilet on social media, both on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, they're getting to this pay to play program where you legitimately have to, uh, you know, advertise with them to actually get your stuff seen by anybody, which is a bunch of crap. You know, it's like truthfully Facebook, I've got 105,000 people that follow me on Facebook. And uh, out of those 105,000 people, literally Facebook will push it out to maybe two, 3,000 people. It's a really good post. I might get 15,000 people that see it. I'm like, where are the 85, 90 other thousand people that follow me? Where, where are they at? And they're, you know, I never bought followers. It's real following. But I'm like, where are those people at? You know, and um, it, it's they, they pay, Facebook goes, oh, if you want 90,000 people to see it, pay us $500. Like, I'm not going to pay you $500 to see a post. So, 
you know, it's one of those where you got to understand engagement in the past couple of years. Facebook, because they own Instagram as well, has completely gone in the toilet. They they are greedy. They're a greedy company, and that's all there is to it, you know. But Instagram, you know, it, it has been where you, you see, you know, all these people. And it's unfortunate for women, um, you know, because, you know, you see all these models that are Instagram models, and they got 2 million followers. Does anybody know who they are? No. Um, but they're in a bikini, right? So I guess dudes follow them, you know, and, and I'm sure part of those following is bot, you know, but it's one of those where it's just bot as in not robotics. I mean, like, you know, the well, it is the same, but they buy them, but they're fake. Um, but it's just interesting, you know, it, it truly, truly is an interesting concept, you know, and uh, everything's overly inflated and, you know, and it's been this conversation. Well, you know, one of the big things is, and, um, you know, I've got some friends. There's, they run a company called Motorsports Curated. Right now they're running a contest. And uh, I'm in it. So I'll, I'll be honest with you. You go to their site, you're going to see me and 49 other people. And actually some big-name people from the world of motorsports are, are being followed, you know, by Motorsports Curated. So we're in this contest. And so Haley Deegan, who's past guest of the show, big influencer, she is giving a shout-out to all of us, basically saying, hey, I'm giving away this prize in this case, it's cash and a go-kart. Um, you know, if you want to win this prize, you got to go follow these 49 accounts. So people go and follow those 49 accounts, and then, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, one, if you do all that, then at some point you're going to win uh, win this prize. So, it, you know, or have a chance to win this prize. So it sends really big, you know, real followers to follow us which totally within the Facebook parameters, it's legit, it's real, they're not fake followers. You know, it's getting creative. And then you've got the people with the fake followers that are just, you know, they go and spend nine ninety nine on some Chinese website and all, all of a sudden these robots with profiles and no followers follow them. That's crap because those people never engage. Like people were getting from, say, this contest with Haley Deegan, legitimate people who are in motorsports. They follow her because of motorsports. They're going to see our posts. They're going to engage with them. They're going to comment. It's newfound fans, right? It's, it, it's actually a really cool way to go about things. Um, you know, the buying of stuff isn't, you know, but I've had a lot of people go, well, how'd you get your following, you know, and, and I've been creative. We've done giveaways. Hey, follow me and follow this other account. And we're going to give away a set of wheels or a GoPro or something like that. You know, I've done a lot of that in the past, maybe not so much recently, but we did in the past. I uh, work with Dirtfish and gave away some Xboxes at one point, things like that. So it's a very similar concept to this thing with uh, with Haley Deegan that I'm in. But, uh, you know, I, I've had people go, oh, well, how'd you get it? And things like that. And what you don't know, too, is if whether you're trying to grow your social media following or if you're a racer, you got to invest in yourself. If you're trying to grow your social media following, buy buy some of the software where you can edit your photos and make it better. You know what I mean? Buy, they've got a thing called a B-Script you can get for your phone that basically turns your phone into a real legit camera, you know, with lenses. It costs money, though. You know, you can invest into that to make your content better. GoPros, buy GoPros, you know, up your video game. Not video game, but, you know, your game in video, you know. Um, uh, up your game. Make your level of content better, that much better. So when people are flipping by, they stop and go, oh, man, that's awesome. You know, I know in our case, like, we spend a ton of money on content. You know, I was just out of Vegas Torino. I had a social media team, people posting live social media for me during the race, right? I had a staff writer standing by writing articles, things like that. We invited Racer Magazine out. We invited my good friend Steve Arpin out. Um, we invited a couple of sponsors out. And, uh, you know, not only that, but we had, um, I'm looking at, uh, we had a photography, a team of photographers that I believe is about five or six photographers shooting for us. Um, we had our social media team that all had cameras as well. They were shooting quick bites for social and, and things like that. We had a video crew. Um, we had a helicopter. We hired a helicopter to follow the race car at some point so we could get that, you know, and, um, and shoot drone footage. Um, so we had helicopter, drone footage. We had a full-time guy shooting video um, for us as well as gr uh, ground teams at various spots. Like this doesn't come cheap. But during the event and after the event, we legitimately put out an absolute epic ton of media right and people see that and what happens they follow us because they know in the race hey these guys are going to be pumping stuff out after the race they're going to be pumping stuff out we've invested in the media around our program and uh it's really truly uh you know done wonders for for what we do and it, and it delivers value to our partners right so our following has come because we've invested yeah you know we're, we're paying money you know what I mean? It's one of those, like I've said, social media doesn't come cheap. You want to be an influencer, you want to be legit, it ain't going to come cheap. Look at Ken Block. What has Ken Block done? Yeah. But look at his videos and all the content, you know, and the reasons why you follow Ken Block. 
it doesn't come cheap. Same with B.J. Baldwin. You look at anybody with a big following, man, they've put in the time, they've put in the effort, and they've grown it. So, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, you can do it. Market yourself, invest in yourself, and, uh, yeah, things are going to turn around. But, uh, yeah, we got to take a short break, and uh, Chris Leone and I, we got some power rankings to come right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Hang tight. Don't go anywhere. Conditions off the pavement are always changing. So why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle's speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode, beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Gentle Tired Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Chris Leone here, my media director. It is power rankings time, and we had one hell of a lot of racing to talk about. I mean, the big one. Uh, the Indianapolis 500 happened, uh, Chris. I was not a fan of the finish. I think a lot of people on the internet were fans of the finish. Uh, some, you know, some of the purists, things like that. Um, I understand why IndyCar did what it did, but I feel like it's like finishing a novel, but somebody ripped the last page out, and you just kind of finish it, and it, and then it's like dot dot dot. Like you kind of knew what was going to happen. But it, I, I feel like it was unfinished, and I, I don't know. For maybe I, my mind has been polluted by the whole NASCAR gimmick of the green white checkers. But I feel like I just knew what we were set up for with Graham and Dixon and Sato with five laps to go. And I, I, I'm not opposed to Sato winning. I just personally wanted to see the shootout, man. I get it. I mean, I don't know, Jim. I'm I'm closer with the purists, not for the sake of purist being purist but in, in terms of it's all in how you watch a race right you know it's all in it, it's tough you know it, it's tough obviously everybody wants to see every race finish under green flag conditions if they can possibly see it finish under green flag conditions doesn't matter if it's nascar doesn't matter if it's the indy 500 doesn't matter if it's your local short track at the same time you know it's all in it's all in how we watch a race. I found myself after watching the first 195 laps of that race perfectly satisfied by it, you know? And and that's the thing. It's if you only care about the finish, then why do we want to why do we even run all 500 miles? If we're if we're only focused on the last 10 laps, then run a 10 lap race. I mean, and I come from a series that used to run 10 lap races you know the whole thing was the finish um it just to me it's it's how we've been conditioned recently and for better or worse nascar has moved to the green white checkered checkered finishes it certainly has reshaped the motorsport landscape but to me i mean you know we got the thrill of victory we got the agony of defeat we got everything that used to be in those abc wild world of sports intros in that Indy 500. And for the record, you know, just to add, we probably would have had a one lap shootout if we had restarted that race. Right. Uh, I remember one of the first Indy 500s that I was old enough to remember watching. It was 1996, the buddy Lazier broken back year, the first year of the IRL that race ended in a one lap shootout. And it ended with four cars wrecking together in turn four and Eliseo Salazar having to duck a flying car, his own teammate right above him. You know, I I mean, the green-white checkers seem to cause a lot of wrecks on high-speed tracks. 
I don't understand how we justify pushing for a finish like that in the era of wheel tethers and arrow screens. To me, they're going for completely different goals. And I can't personally reconcile the two. So, yeah, not the finish that we wanted, but I don't think we complained all that much when Tony Kanan won under caution, you know, when he finally got his 500. There have been a lot of big name Indy 500 winners. Hell, Dale Earnhardt won his Daytona 500 under caution. <laughs> I mean, I it's to me it's a recency bias thing, man. It's we didn't complain back then. I mean, to me it's it's funny that we're complaining now, especially now that people talk about oh, racing needs to be pure again. Well, Finishing under yellow actually is a lot more pure than you would think. And a lot of big <laughs> wins have been taken that way. Um, so I don't know. I Everybody's got the right to their opinion, right? But I, yeah. I've i got zero problem with how that race finished because I was perfectly satisfied with the first 475 miles of it. Yeah. Well, and I'm one too. And I, and I, I want this to be clear on air. Like I'm okay with it. Like I think just it, – ideal situation you would have had five laps you would have got to see him shoot out i i do truthfully think dixon had a little something for sato um and we were seeing him kind of push but uh you know they, then they got into traffic and and whatever happened but um you know I, i'm fine with sato taking the win the one thing i will say is if it's a 500 mile race you don't do a green white checkered or whatever you do and add one lap because those guys especially at the indianapolis 500 their fuel strategy, they've got it marked down to a T. I mean, you know, Robbie Gordon lost his, you know, Indy 500 because his fuel strategy was about one corner too short. You know, th those guys are threading the needle, and the last thing you can do is add even one lap to an Indianapolis 500 because it throws everything out the window. So can't, count me in the purest camp from that regard because these guys' strategy are all set up to run exactly – 500 miles and you can't add any of it so you know that being said I guess uh you know I, I guess color me in the okay we finished under caution it's just there's that part of me that goes man as a race fan it sure would have been cool to see those last five laps but it is what it is we got an Indy 500 again next year I do have to tip the cap to uh, Scott Dixon because he had one hell of a I want to say month of May but month of August um you know from qualifying all the way through the race I mean uh, he was just he was top notch, and I think once again he proved why he's one of the best drivers in the world. That being said, Chris, we got to get to power rankings. Who do you have at number five on your list this week? Number five, we are going to go to Loretta Lynn's for my list. And it's been, first of all, how cool is it that pro racing is actually happening at Loretta Lynn's this year? Maybe not the ideal circumstances, but always a fun little change. And uh, I'm going to go to the 250 class. And Jeremy Martin has had a tough couple of years you know having to deal with the injuries that he's dealt with missing as much time as he had but getting back to the top step of the podium I mean pro motocross it's just what it takes to be competitive outdoors and especially in the wake of injuries like he's dealt with recovery like he's dealt with uh certainly a well-deserved spot at the top of the podium for the 250s and a well-deserved spot on my power rankings list i've got him at number five no arguments there chris for my number five i'm gonna go to the world of nascar but i'm not going cup series racing i'm gonna go to uh i still call it the craftsman truck series the truck series um uh, let's see um but we're we're gonna go uh to our winner there is zane smith you know zane's got his uh roots in off road but i gotta tell you zane's had one hell of a you know three race stretch he's uh taken two victories in the truck series he finished in the top five and uh, you know this kid i got to watch him in arca on site both of us did he's a real deal he carries himself well um you know very very impressed with this young kid and you know to take his first two career truck victories within uh, you know within three weeks of each other or a couple of weeks of each other i mean that, that's a statement i mean he's Definitely one of the rising stars in NASCAR. I can tell you those cup teams are already salivating over uh, uh, over this kid. But, uh, you know, two two out of the last three races have gone to Zane Smith. And, uh, you know, the one he didn't finish in – or the one he didn't win, he finished in the top five. So uh, I got Zane Smith on my list at uh, number five this week, Chris. No doubt. Now, Zane has really been putting the heat on the field the past couple of weeks and certainly well-deserved um, – you know, those first couple of victories, I know that first win at Michigan uh, was super emotional for him. And, you know, somebody who I think we're going to see in victory lane quite a bit more over the coming years. 
I'm going to stay at Dover. I am going to, uh, but I am going to move to the Cup Series for my number four, and I am going to go to the second race winner from the Dover doubleheader, Kevin Harvick. Um, you know, somebody who people keep talking about, oh, when's Kevin Harvick going to retire? He's 44. He's been around forever. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. And the special added caveat, 700 victories for Ford in the Cup Series. Now, to me, be, having been a kid when Kevin Harvick replaced Dale Earnhardt in, you know, in the Goodwrench car and the Chevy, it's still weird to me to see Kevin Harvick as a Ford driver. It's always right? going to be weird to me <laughs> to see Kevin Harvick as a Ford driver. But nonetheless, that's a pretty cool milestone there. And, you know... Happy has been, uh, he's definitely been one of the strongest drivers this year. Took the victory when they uh returned to racing at Darlington. He's eclipsed the 50 win mark. You know, he he keeps adding them up. I would not be surprised if he ends up taking the championship in Phoenix, uh, you know, to at the uh end of this season. But uh, certainly being able to hand the blue oval a milestone victory. To me, that's what gave him the edge on my list over Denny Hamlin with the Saturday victory. So I have Kevin Harvick, number four. Yeah, well, and no arguments with Kevin Harvick at number four because, well, Chris, I've got Kevin Harvick at number four as well. Same reasons you said, but, you know, his win there, you know, it was dominating. 223 laps out of 311. I mean, anytime you lead that many laps, I mean, it's definitely a statement. I, I feel like this year we've had kind of a big fourth cup level. I know you and I have talked about it. Hamlin, one of them. Harvick, um, you know, we've had Truex in the mix. I think Chase Elliott, uh, you got to count him into the equation as well. But, uh, um, you know, I, I feel like Harvick has kind of stepped forward and said hey I'm the guy uh, I think if he's got any challengers definitely Denny Hamlin um, but I, I feel like Harvick is just uh, is his championship Chris I feel like he's driving at such an elite level right now and this is uh Harvick's always good but I feel like this season Harvick's great and uh, you know not only that but like you said wrapping in that 700th uh, you know NASCAR victory for four just uh, a big weekend for Kevin Harvick and uh, you know I have him at number four on my list that being said we got to take a short commercial break we'll return here to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, Jim Beaver, Chris Leone here, getting uh, started with our power rankings. We are uh, two in. I had uh, Zane Smith and Kevin Harvick. And, Chris, I'm drawing blanks on who your number five was. And uh, and we've got uh, Kevin Harvick at number four on your list as well. Uh, fill me in on who and the listeners in because I'm completely losing my mind here <laughs> to who number five was on your list. And then let's move on to number three, buddy. Well, I'm going to guess that Jeremy Martin wasn't on your list then because that was my number five. We went to all there the we wins for that. But um, I am going to stay I am going to stay on the dirt, but I am going to go to a fully different discipline for number three. We're going to head to Lucas Oil Speedway in Missouri and their long-awaited return to the Lucas Oil off-road schedule. But I'm not going to the Pro 2 class. I'm not even, I'm not even going to a Pro Truck class. I'm going to Pro Buggy. And Elliot Watson sweeping the weekend. Nobody else was able to pull that off over the entire course of the weekend. Didn't matter what class you were in. You had a couple of guys take two victories in a class. You know, you had Brock Hager was able to take three across two classes. But Elliot Watson, back to back to back. Um, 
certainly a statement for the defending champion. I know he wasn't able to quite crack the top step of the podium in the opener at Glen Helen. There were a couple of uh, first-time winners there, but um, Elliot Watson, I mean, anytime you can sweep three races on a weekend against the same field and certainly against a pro field in any division, I mean, that's that's a pretty huge weekend. And, you know, for me, buggies have always thrown me off, man. I open wheels on the dirt and with jumps. I just, to me, it's always, I don't know. I've always struggled to wrap my head around them. I mean, coming from rally cross, it's, you know, and, and seeing how many suspension pieces we broke over the past half decade, it's, it's just always confounded me. Some of the, what the manufacturers put together to make those vehicles last through those races. To me, it's just, it's it's like it's black magic, right? So, you know, and and I and I'm sure I've got, you know, people listening right now who are rolling their eyes about how just kind of ignorant about, you know, I am about that because obviously buggies have been such a crucial part of off-road racing both in the desert and short course for as long as they have, but to me it's one of those things I can never look at a pro buggy whether you're running in the desert or short course and not be fascinated by how the heck that thing holds together. So, you know, you take my own sort of bias and respect for that and you amplify it with a perfect weekend and you've got somebody who's going on my power rankings list. So Elliot Watson, number three. Uh, I'm not going to argue with Elliot. I, he, first off, he's just a great kid. He's a good guy. And, uh, you know, I know he's been doing a lot of uh, desert, well, I guess uh, UTV racing with the factory Honda program. And I, I was so stoked they plucked him because I, I truly feel like he's one of those next level talents who in the coming years we're going to hear a lot of. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't have Elliot on my list. I went with somebody you had mentioned at number three. I'm going to uh, Wheatlands, Missouri as well and, and talking some Lucas Oil racing in that triple header. But I am going to go with Brock Higger because um, Brock, you know, running in uh, two of the, you know, toughest divisions in short course. And, you know, he went uh, uh, one, two in UTV. Um, what did he get? Uh, two wins in pro light. He had a third in pro light. Um, and then, you know, in the UTV division, he got fourth, I believe, in the uh, in the race. He didn't podium. So five total podiums out of six races and the one he didn't podium. Uh, you know, he ended up finishing right outside of the podium in the fourth spot. And you and I have talked about Brock Hager, and you want to talk about next-level talents. I mean, he's just like Elliot Watson. He's one of the futures of off-road. And uh, Brock, I mean, whether it be desert or short course kid, uh, he's a total package. He is definitely legit. But I just felt like, you know, three wins spread over two divisions with five podiums in six races. I just felt like that was something special. Obviously El Elliot Watson had a great, great uh, run there at, uh, at, you know, at Wheatlands. And I think uh, the, the other one that I do want to mention too, in this conversation, Miles Cheek, uh, Miles Cheek had two wins and a second place finish in one of the UTV divisions there. So uh, Miles Cheek, a great weekend as well, but I just felt like with the sheer amount of podiums, I, I had to give Brock Heger uh, the top sp spot on the, the uh, Miles Cheek, Elliot Watson, Brock Heger, uh, uh mountain of podiums they got this weekend. So uh, I went with Heger there at three, Chris. Yeah, no doubt. Now, Brock definitely, uh, all the respect in the world to what he was able to pull off, uh, you know, it, and certainly an exciting weekend. Anytime you've got a triple head or two, certainly a fun one. Uh, for my number two, again, we're going to stay on the dirt, but we're going to go back to two wheels and Loretta Lynn's. Zach Osborne. Now, here's somebody, obviously, who's been coming up the ranks for a couple of years and, you know, has certainly had his ups and downs. But uh, kicking off this pro motocross season with a bang, back-to-back -back victories. I mean, you know, so we wrapped up the Supercross season. We had the uh, just all of those rounds stacked on one another in Salt Lake City. And Eli Tomac finally got his Supercross title, right? And, and Eli has been the dominant force in pro motocross for a few years now. And so finally, you know, you, you come into this pro motocross season now that it's finally started thinking, Oh, well, you know, this is finally going to be the year that Eli is able to sweep both championships and he gets to check that off and go, uh, you know, go sort of right off into the sunset on this year, having his best year of his career. Um, but to, uh, Quote, I guess, college game day, not so fast, my friend. Zach Osborne just pouncing out there, back-to-back -back victories to start the season. And 
when you've got a truncated schedule the way that pro motocross does this year and you've only got you know eight nine events to get it done every win counts that much more in a shortened championship and zach osborne making the statement you know hey you know eli you may have finally gotten that supercross title but you're gonna have to work for it to sweep both of them now that we're on on an even playing field again yeah well, and I had Zach Osborne at number two on my list as well for everything you said, Chris. And I mean, you, you know, kind of shot out of a cannon taking two wins there at Loretta's. And I do want to mention, though, you, you look at his two wins and it wasn't like he was sweeping the motos. You know, he, he went 2-1 and he's gone 5-1. And what that tells me is, is a guy going 5-1 and one and still getting the win? I mean, that, that doesn't happen very often. You know, most of the time it's a guy going 2-3, 1-2, 1-3 three, one, three maybe. But a 5-1, that doesn't happen very often. And what that tells me is it's so, so competitive in the 450 division in pro motocross right now that you're going to start seeing some of those. I mean, uh, you know, for you know, he hasn't swept a weekend yet, but yet he's still getting, uh, you know, the overall victories. Like, it's, uh, it's just uber competitive in the 450 division, which I think makes what Zach Osborne's been able to do to go 2-0 and to start the year even that more impressive. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's... I wouldn't have been surprised to see nine different riders take overall wins in pro motocross to start this season, just because you know how that goes, man. Just things, uh, things happen, things break up. And especially with everybody being so off kilter because of all the schedule changes and postponements and, you know, one of the races being switched to Loretta Lynn's at the very last minute. And then another race being switched to Loretta Lynn's at the very last minute, you know, it's, it's really about who can adapt the best. And Zach Osborne's certainly somebody who has dealt with adversity well enough over the years to know how to adapt and, uh, you know, and all the respect in the world for him to be able to do that. I have a feeling that we may be going to the same driver for number one. I think it's by default because of the race yeah. that this driver was able to win. Yeah. Well, and truthfully, I mean, anytime you win the Indianapolis 500, I don't care what anybody else did. You're going to be number one on my we- list that <laughs> week. Like, uh, you know, it, to me, I, it's just one of those where you got to have Takuma Sato at number one. And, uh, you know, Chris, you'll probably dive into more of the nuts and bolts of his performance and stuff like that. He was strong, you know, through qualifying. He was in the Fast Nine. Obviously, you know, this is a big event for uh, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. I mean, you know, basically, you know, two out of the top three cars. Uh, you know, it, it, like I think the internet said, you know, immediately they go, this isn't the big three in IndyCar. You know, in the last, it's been Ganassi, Andretti, and Penske. No, 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 no. Now you've got Ganassi, Ganassi, Penske, Andretti, and Ray Hall. And I think that's a big statement with them moving into that. Hey, th- this is a big four now in IndyCar. And I think that's big. And, and for Sato, I got to give him a lot of credit, Chris. I've said this before, but he wasn't the best Formula One driver. And I don't mean that he just didn't score points. I mean, he just wasn't that good. He crashed out a lot on his own accord, you know? Um, and I think he, a lot of people wrote him off after his Formula One career ended. And I got to tell you, he has been, he, he's not known as a Formula One driver anymore. He's known as an IndyCar driver. And that's something that's really a statement. You know, it's funny. We were, I was with my dad. We were watching the last couple of laps and we just kind of joked about it. If 15 years ago, you had told us that Takuma Sato, because at this time, Takuma was still an F1 driver. If you had told us 15 years ago that Takuma Sato was going to become a two-time Indy 500 champion, <laughs> then we probably would have questioned which aliens had abducted you or where you had gotten whatever substance you were on or what. But, man, all the credit in the world to how Takuma has reinvented his career since leaving Formula One. Yeah, certainly a driver who had a lot of uneven performances. He was, if not the best Japanese Formula One driver of all time. He is certainly always going to be in that discussion, um, regardless of how his career eventually ended up turning out. Um, I know, obviously, the Super Gory years weren't particularly great. Um, That's a team probably nobody's talked about in years, huh? Um, but moving over to IndyCar, he's just consistently gotten better and he's really become a thinking man's driver, which is a weird thing to say about the guy whose mantra is no attack, no chance. Um, because they, they seem to be completely one against one another, right? You know, one is purely uh, aggression and one is 
purely strategy. But if you know when and how to apply that aggression, it truly makes you one of the greats. And now, you know, there was only one driver coming into that field that had won multiple Indianapolis 500s, and that was Elio Castro Neves. So Takuma Sato won his second Indy 500 before Scott Dixon won his second, before Alexander Rossi won his second, before Ryan Hunter Ray won his second, before all these just superstars of the sport, legends. I mean, Scott Dixon's going to go down as one of the, if not the best, one of the top three IndyCar drivers of all time. And Takuma Sato beat him to two Indy 500s. That's a statement right there. Yeah. about what Takuma Sato has become as a driver and the legacy that he's, you know, it's somebody on Twitter made a great comparison. Takuma Sato and Ari Leyendijk have been very similar in terms of their careers where both of them, they've only really taken a handful of IndyCar wins, but they're both multi-time Indy 500 winners. Um you know, they both they both go down as conquerors of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And there are a lot of different ways that you can define a successful career. And, you know, there are a lot of different legacies you can hang your hat on. And the question really becomes, what's more special to be one of the best drivers just all around or one of the true legends of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? And different people are going to answer that question differently. But, you know. It's not even just that. I mean, remember, Takuma's got a victory at Long Beach as well. I mean, he's won just about every major event there is to win in IndyCar. If he ever plucks off a championship, then we have to talk about him as one of the all-time greats. Yeah. Well, Chris, I agree with you, but uh, we got to wrap things up here. We'll be back with more after this on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, wrapping up another two hours of your favorite motorsports radio show. Thanks to everybody at Sirius XM, Channel 211, Dan Patrick Radio, Sports Byline, uh, U.S. American Forces Network, Podcast One, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Down and Dirty Show.com, all of our local affiliates on Sports Byline, everybody that tunes in. Yes, thank you, thank you for making this show one of the biggest motorsports shows in the country. Next week, uh, man, I don't know what we got next week. It's Cranon Week. I'm going to be on site. Maybe I'll take my microphone and do some interviews when we're there at the track. Would be a hell of a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, being on site at Cranon. Uh, you know, those of you tuning in, uh, you know, th- that are uh, tuning in uh, nationally, uh, make sure to tune into the broadcast Saturday, Sunday, especially Sunday. I will be on the broadcast along with Tiffany Stone, Ralph Shaheen, as well as Mia Chapman. And uh, we are going to, uh, you know, be bringing you the best off-road racing on the planet live from Cranon. I know Racer Magazine will be covering the carrying the feed. Um, you know, check out uh, Cranon's uh, social media as well. Man, there's a lot to love uh, coming at you from Cranon, the big house as they call it. And I got to tell you, the most most exciting turn one in all of motorsports. It is, uh, you know, elbows out, elbows as wide as you can get them, bumping, banging, 
Um, you know, epic carnage, rollovers, horsepower, fuel, fire, destruction. I don't know what else to say, but Crandon brings it all, and uh, they're going to be running under the lights as well at some point. I know we got some Ultra 4 racing, so uh, it's going to be a big, big weekend and a big, big show, and uh, I can't wait for it, man. So going to be good, good stuff. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, make sure and tune in to uh, that. Thanks to all of our partners, uh, General Tire, Polaris, Razor Vision Wheel, Rigid Industries, Dirtfish Rally School, Optimus Starters, uh, GSP XTV Axles, our good friends there at iRacing. Uh, don't forget, you need a coupon code for uh, Dirtfish Rally School. It is Jim Beaver 15 and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, what is it, uh, pr Jim Beaver there at iRacing.com. Lost my train of thought there, man. It's been a long day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of fun to have, uh, you know, especially if you follow me on G- uh, at, at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. And don't forget, go over to uh, Apple Podcasts. Hit the subscribe button. It definitely supports us more than you know if you subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And if you leave a rating or review, uh, it even helps us out even more. So uh, I would like to know, though, hit me up on social media. If you're heading out to Cranon, if you're a listener to the show, hit me up on social media at Jim Beaver 15. Love to meet you. Love to hang out. I got some time to burn, uh, you know, the first couple of days I'm at Cranon. So looking forward to hanging out with some locals and having a uh, hell of a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, uh, see you guys out there. And, uh, you know, you guys have a safe week. And we'll see you next time right here on the General Tire Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Thanks for tuning in. 